Hey guys, today we're testing out Google AI Studio's new vibe coding tool to see how it compares with things like V0, Bolt, Lovable, Replit even. It's entirely free, included with every Google account. Uh, we're gonna give it a try, see how it compares to other tools that we've used here on the channel and that I have a lot of experience with, even compared to things like Cursor and Claude Code, which are really advanced development tools. Hey, I'm Craig Hewitt. Welcome back to 100 Days of AI. Let's dive in and see what we're building today. So I have a prompt here. I just typed it out in Gemini. We're not gonna actually run it in Gemini, but this is the prompt. And so what we're doing is I have a new website and it doesn't have any images on the site. So I'll just pull the website up here real quick and show you what I'm talking about. So my website here in the blog area, I don't have any featured images. I don't have an image that goes here. This is like roughly 1280 by 720, but it just doesn't have any images. And this is really lame, but you know the images didn't come over when I migrated it. And so I wanna create these images. And I have a CSV of all of the posts that I have and the title and the description of those. So what I wanna do is build a little web tool where I can upload that CSV file of the all the blog posts and it will create images for all of these and I can just upload them. Okay, so the prompt I have here is create a web application that takes as an input a CSV file that has a list of blog posts and creates blog post features images from it. The CSV will have columns for the post title, description and image URL. The application will read the CSV and queue up a system prompt to Google Gemini 2.5 Flash uh, to create the image prompt that will then send that image prompt to Google 2.5, uh, Gemini 2.5 Flash Nano Banana to create the image. The image must be 1280 by 720 pixels, PNG format, it's extremely important, this is the A. And then I give it a little bit on the, the style. So I want it to include the orange kind of color that I have and be illustration style. I'm gonna say with a dark background. No, I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna give it uh, a consisting styling. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna say here is the look of my website. Okay, so this is the prompt we're gonna use. And I'm gonna come over here to Google AI Studio. So if you just go to aistudio.google.com and go to build, this is the new vibe coding section. So I'm gonna paste this in, and then I'm gonna take just a screenshot of my website and plop it in there as reference. Uh, and so I want it to have all the context that it can. Okay, so it's gonna use model here is 2.5 Pro, that's great. Uh, it does have built-in voice to text, which is really cool. And you can add files and things like that. We've already done this. Okay, and we're just gonna hit go and kind of see what happens. So first impression here looks like all the other vibe coding tools. I have a running kind of narrative of what's going on over here. And I have the preview going on over here. Okay, so I like what it's telling me, so I can publish to GitHub. This is cool, like a little preview. Uh, allow user upload progress, image tailored generation to your exact needs, CSV validation and uh, error handling, cool. Okay, so we definitely have CSV going on here. And while this is working, I'm going to pull up the CSV file that we're talking about. I'm gonna create a short version of it just to test with, and then we'll have the full version for production. Okay, so here's the CSV I was talking about. So we have the slug, the title, date, categories, all this, and then the contents of the post here. So we probably can get rid of some of this, but we'll just see how it handles this uh, when it's ready. So back over here, so thought for 51 seconds has these pieces created already. So it did create a TypeScript app, uh, which, which is fine. It's one of the options that we had at the beginning and, and I just kind of left it. Uh, so it's creating TypeScript, which is, I would say the most popular framework and technology selection for vibe coding is like Next.js with TypeScript, uh, and that's cool. Okay, cool, oh, how funny. So it created the tool we're using in the style of my website. That's like uh, touche, that's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna make a copy of this sheet, and I'm just gonna include the first three lines. I'm gonna delete everything else. So just the first three blog posts here. And we'll see how this, how would you just want to see how it handled? I don't want it sending a ton of calls if it's not working right. Okay, so I'm going to download this, just the first three posts as a CSV. And I'm going to come over here and give this a whirl. Okay, so let's see, checkpoint. You know, it didn't give me, it didn't give me like, hey, I'm done. Like, you know, give it a whirl. It didn't give me anything like that. I'm assuming that it's done at this point, but it, but it didn't give me any kind of success message. That's fine. Okay, so gonna upload this. Ah, okay, so CSV must contain post title and description columns. 
fine. So let's see. What did it call those? So post underscore title and then description. Good for it. It's being uh, it's being rigid. And then uh, this is description. You know, this is the full contents and it really should probably be like a summary. I don't have a summary. We'll see how it handles it. Maybe that we need to send. Uh, okay, cool. Generate 156 images. No, I don't want you to create 156 images. I want you to create three images. Why does this have 156? <laughs> Why does it say it's 156 images? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I see what's going on. Okay, no. So what's going on is, so the way I exported this, it has all the like P tags and stuff in it. Uh, and I think it's creating each of these separately, each of these like paragraph tags and H2 tags as a separate post. That's not what we want. And so we can just tell it here. Okay, it's not working right because the CSV that I upload has things like paragraph and heading tags in it. I want you to ignore all of those when you send the contents of the post to Gemini to create the image prompt. In the CSV I just uploaded, there should only be three blog posts. Okay, so uh, this is a huge problem in any kind of software is validating and verifying CSV file uploads because you just don't kind of know what to expect. So I just told it, I said, hey, what you just did in creating a whole bunch of posts because of all these paragraph tags, you know, that's not cool. I could also just clean this up and like send all of this to Gemini or something to remove all these. But I want this to stay because this is the data I need. So it's doing some like parsing of the CSV logic, building that in, and we'll be able to go restart this in just a second. Dealing with messy C, yep, blah, 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 blah. And then it's upload, updated this file upload file. And so let's just go to the code editor and just see, yep, so we have all the code here and we're able to export this to GitHub and we're able to deploy this as an application. Okay, cool. Let's go back to the preview here. It refreshed this, that's great. And let's select our website contents closer. Okay, so there's four, hmm. Why are there four? So let's see, we have 10 sales rules to live by, four reasons why, and five, five sales questions. I'm not sure why this is doing this, but let's just see. This is a nice trick too of just like, if you have a whole bunch of data, don't, you know, don't, don't do that before you know this is working right, because what we don't want is like sending a whole ton of data and racking up API credit costs without knowing that this is actually working. Okay, that's a, that's a reasonable image, you know? That's a reasonable image. Now the key here is it's gotta be consistent across all of these, because when I go to my blog, I want the look and the vibe to be consistent. I want that now, and then I want like when I publish new blog posts, for it to still be consistent. So it's all really important that, that whatever prompting mechanism that I have, I want to be able to reproduce this in the future. Okay, so yeah, like, I, you know, this, this, is a, this is a pretty reasonable image. Like I would be happy to have this image on this page here. Five sales questions to ask, cool. Yeah, so let's download this and we'll upload it here in the, do, 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 bring this over here. That's a pretty cool image. Now, this is square. So, <laughs> so that's not okay. Uh, so if we look, so if we open up Finder and we look at this image, we can see that it's square, I'm sure. 1024 by 1024. Okay, so that's wrong. So now we'll come back over here to the prompt and say, Okay, I like the images, but they are square. The images must be 1280 wide by 720 tall pixels and in PNG format. Please update the code and the call that you're, go that you're using to Google Gemini Nano Banana to ensure that the images are rectangular, not square. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da, to ensure that the images are rectangular, not square. Okay, so this has to happen, right? Because what it just doesn't work on my website for it to have a, a square image here that'll be all weird and not centered and everything. So the images have to be rectangular. 
And so let's just, while this is working, let's go look at the code and see blog card. Okay, this is just like showing where the cards are. Gemini service. This is the prompt that it's sending and it's specifying the, the dimensions. Hmm. So it's in the prompt. We can see it right here. Ah, okay. So we're going to use image in four zero model. Okay, great. Cool. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. And this is done. Okay, great. So we switched models. That's cool. Let's upload the file and do it again. So while this is working, Imogen is uh, like the image model like that, that lives inside the uh, Google AI Studio. So yeah, this is the most advanced kind of AI or API powered image model. So it's not surprising that's what they want to do. Ooh, okay, cool. I like this image. Four reasons why your SaaS needs something else. Okay, so th you know these are different styles already, but you know pretty similar. Let's download this and see what it looks like. Okay, it's rectangular. Bam. Okay, that's awesome. I actually quite like this one. So there's a little inconsistency here. You know, like this one I like quite a bit. This one I don't quite understand, I don't think. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> this is like the hex code for the color because that one's no good. This one... This one I'm not sure about, but you know, something I'm having to do is I'm gonna download these images, which I don't wanna do. So let's just say, make to where I can click on the thumbnail preview of a generated image and it opens it in a light box in full size mode so I can preview it better. What I wanna be able to do is click this image and it opens a full size version of it. Cause I'm just getting like a thumbnail right now, uh, like a little preview, that doesn't work for me. The other thing is like, what, what am I supposed to do from here? Like I have to go download all these and upload them. Like I want this to be exported into a, a list of some sort to really, I want it to be added to this spreadsheet. I think that's a lot to ask. Let's, uh, let's see if it can at least put these all in a list to where I can download the whole thing. Let's just make the light, make sure the light box works first. So it will finish doing this. It refreshed the page upload this, generate the images. So what it's doing again here is it's taking the title and the description here, sending a prompt to Gemini to create the image prompt. Say, hey, create me an image prompt. Then it's sending that image prompt to Imogen, Imogen 4, uh, to create the actual image. And it's just looping through that for the images that it has. So cool, okay. Man, it just loves doing this, doesn't it? That is, that is terrible. Okay, so... You know, I think that aside from the styling of it, this is working as we want. You know, what I will do here, uh, just to, I really need this service, but but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pause the tutorial at this point to say, what I wanna do is create references for it. And this is just for, for you to say like, hey, if you're not entirely happy with the results you're getting from AI like this, you need to give it better context. And for me, my little, you know, if we go back to the prompt that I sent, this is all that I said. You know, so in the, in the whole world of images, I gave it 12 words here or whatever. It's just not fair, right? So what I could say is like, I like the look of this kind of image, or I like the kind of look of this image, or include characteristics like this and this and this, and maybe even, hey, create a comprehensive style guide. If you watch some of our videos on like Claude Code and front-end development, you know, like a style guide in a really robust reference is super important for AI to do the job that you want it to do. Because really, we're, we're just kind of saying like, hey, this is the color. Uh, and it doesn't really know like what this is. So it's just including that because it I told it that it's important. It's including that in all of these. So if I give it much more context around the actual look that I want, it'll be a lot better. So I'm gonna run off and do that. The last thing I'm gonna do here is say like, hey, uh, give me a way to download all these. Okay, that's great. Now give me a way to download all of the generated images in a zip file. Cool, because what I want is I wanna be able to go and download all these and then upload them to my blog. Uh, and they're uh, very smartly, they're labeled by the, the title of the post. So it'll be really easy to figure out kind of what goes where.
While we're waiting for this to finish up, if you are interested in building AI agents like this, I'm releasing an AI agent bootcamp. Uh, we're going to walk you kind of A to Z through creating your own AI agent for yourself and for your business to 10x the productivity that you have at work and kind of in your life. Join the wait list here. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Okay. Link will be in the description below. Uh, okay, so what we've done is download all button will appear next to generate images, probably right here. And it's almost done with this. It'll refresh the page. We'll try it one more time, make sure it's good. And then uh, I'll be really happy with the core functionality. And then I have some homework to do on kind of styling things, which is fine. All right, so we're going to create these images. And I would guess when it's done, it will have the little uh, download all into a zip file button here. Cool, yep, awesome. Okay, so still generating, cool. So it gives me state and I can't click on this button and I can download all of these into a zip file. So, you know, other than styling because I did a very lazy job <laughs> of prompting it, really incredible, really cool. And so just as far as like the AI, Google AI Studio and its capabilities here, like one, uh, like I guess that's the point, like how did this do? Really good, it took what I asked and did a really good job of building it. Uh, it has all of the big kind of integrations that you need that we saw in Firebase Studio, like connecting to GitHub, pushing this live as as a web app. Uh, you create to Google, you know, connect it right to Google Cloud. So like deploying to something like Heroku or whatever is just not an issue. So pretty, pretty cool, pretty robust. You can download the source code here. Uh, like a lot of functionality to love and just like everything else from Google, it's like entirely free. So definitely worth checking out. I'll have a link to Google AI Studio vibe coding tool in the description below. I'm Craig Hewitt. This is 100 Days of AI. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please like, subscribe, smash the bell. I'll see you tomorrow.